Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. This video is about what's happened to the legacy of John A. Macdonald. Uh, in case you don't know, he was Prime Minister of Scotland, oh, sorry, of Canada, way back in the 19th century. Um, and uh, he was born in the United Kingdom. Uh, the Scottish government had him mentioned on the website. They honoured him as a Scotsman who uh, achieved uh, high office abroad. Um, and there was the statue up in Canada. Well, there were several. But one of these had been removed, and he's recently being dishonoured. Why? Well, um, John A. Macdonald pursued a, po pursued a policy um, which uh, is now regarded as unacceptable. They're First Nations people in Canada, as in they are the autochthonous people. Their ancestors uh, dwelt in Canada before uh, European immigrants arrived in the 17th century. And in the 19th century, the Canadian government um, pursued a policy of removing the children um, of these uh, indigenous people. Not in every case, they did sometimes, and these children were required to speak English. They were forbidden from conversing in their mother tongue, and their culture was suppressed. They were brought up by white um, families. Is the state entitled to remove children from their parents under certain circumstances? I think everyone would agree, yes. What's a matter of debate is under what circumstances is the state entitled to take children away um, from their parents? If, if the parents are grossly abusive, I think everyone will agree with that. Um, uh, children are, must be educated up to a certain age. Parents have to send them to school or, provide they, uh, or prove they can provide a decent homeschooling, things of that nature. And um, Canada had compulsory schooling in the late 19th century. So... Um, on these sort of grounds, they, the Canadian government said, oh, well, their parents aren't bringing them up properly and not teaching them to speak English. But we would now recognise these are specious grounds. People can teach their children whichever language they want. Not everyone in Canada spoke English at the time, because, of course, there's Quebec, and some Quebecers only spoke French well into the 20th century. And I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with First Nations cultures, or there's anything um, definitely right about um, Anglophone culture. Um, in Canada. So it was unjustified. It shouldn't have happened. I don't think anyone would defend that policy uh, these days. The, the Catholic Church is about subjective or objective wrongs. Um, objective wrongs that even at the time people should have known it was wrong. And subjective, um, well, we now recognize that this was an immoral thing to do, but in the 19th century people didn't see it that way. And this policy was practiced elsewhere, for instance, in Australia. Um, but it comes onto a broader issue. Should uh, politicians be removed, their images removed from public space, should their name be stricken from internet records and so on, because we now recognise the policies they pursued were unethical? I, I submit that we should not do this. We should not remove them and we should not uh, delete their names. It's a preposterous rewriting of history. John A. Macdonald pursued many policies, some of them laudable. He was a man of his era. Things we do now, a century hence, uh, may be regarded as a dreadful thing to do. Things that were completely uncontroversial to us will later be seen as shocking and scandalous. So um, I'm saying that John A. Macdonald's statue ought to be kept there. We can still acknowledge the wrongdoing and the hurt that came from taking children away from their parents and uh, smothering their culture. So uh, the Scottish government ought to keep a mention of John A. Macdonald, who achieved uh, the highest office in the land, in the Dominion of Canada, uh, and indeed could castigate him for this reprehensible policy of taking First Nations children, First Nations children away from their families, um, but recognise that he uh, rose to great heights and he also did some other marvellous things. Um, so it is the most ridiculous airbrushing of history. Um, it's uh, ahistorical. What these things didn't exist is almost like he didn't happen or something. That's preposterous. Um, so we should practice more value-free uh, history um, and try and be unemotional about it. And people are emoting when they say, ah, oh, he's offensive, there's a violence to seeing his image, things like that. It's ridiculous. We should grow up and get over it. Um, and by today's standard, really no prime minister, president, monarch from 20 years ago more would be allowed. You know, in, in the most liberal Western countries, same-sex marriage is permitted. Whereas 20 years ago, it wasn't. And uh, most politicians advocated against it. At best, many were neutral on it. Therefore, they have to be removed from public view. They can't have a statue or a mention or anything like that, according to this rationale 
that if people don't live up to the most liberal uh, shibboleths and platitudes of 2018, their uh, images must be taken out of public space and their names must be not mentioned. Uh, it's ludicrous. So I would like us to get back to um, a little more of a common sense approach um, and recognize that everyone has their failings and people uh, did things long ago, which we now realize are nauseating. Uh, we can still honor them for their accomplishments and uh, don't think that this one unjust policy has to negate all the good work someone like John A. MacDonald did.